This investigation of Planned Parenthood is based on false premises, one after another after another. It's time to stop wasting time, get on with meaningful work, and stop picking on women and trying to take their choice away. I yield back the balance of my time. The time of the gentleman has expired. We welcome our distinguished witnesses today. Do you and each of you swear that the testimony that you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? And I'll now begin by introducing today's witnesses. The first witness is Dr. Anthony Levitino. Dr. Levitino is a board-certified obstetrician gynecologist. Over the course of his career, Dr. Levitino has practiced obstetrics and gynecology in both private and university settings, including as an associate professor of OBGYN at the Albany Medical College. And Dr. Levitino, we'll begin with you. Welcome. Thank you, Chairman and members of the committee. Um, I only have five minutes, so I'm going to get right to it. Second trimester D&E abortions perform between roughly 14 and 24 weeks of gestation. Your patient today is 17 years old. She's 22 weeks pregnant. Her baby is the length of your hand plus a couple of inches. And she's been feeling her baby kick for the last several weeks. But she's asleep on an operating room table. You walk into that operating room scrubbed and gowned and after removing laminaria, you introduce a suction catheter into the uterus. This is a 14 French suction catheter. If she were 12 weeks pregnant or less, basically the width of your hand or smaller, you could basically do the entire procedure with this. But babies this big don't fit through catheters this size. After suctioning the amniotic fluid out from around the baby, you introduce an instrument called a sofa clamp. It's about 13 inches long. It's made of stainless steel. The business end of this clamp is about two and a half inches long and a half inch wide. There are rows of sharp teeth. This is a grasping instrument. When it gets a hold of something, it does not let go. A d &E procedure is a blind abortion, so picture yourself introducing this and grabbing anything you can blindly and pull, and I do mean hard, and out pops a leg about that big, which you put down on the table next to you. Reach in again, pull again, and pull out an arm about the same length, which you put down on the table next to you, and use this instrument again and again to tear out the spine, the intestines, the heart and lungs. Head in the baby that size is about the size of a large plum, can't see it, but you have a pretty good idea you've got it if you've got your instrument around something and your fingers are spread about as far as they go. You know you did it right if you crush down on the instrument and white material runs out of the cervix. That was the baby's brains. Then you could pull out skull pieces. And you have a day like I had a lot of times, sometimes a little face comes back and stares back at you. Congratulations, you just successfully performed a second trimester DNA abortion. You just affirmed her right to choose. One more question, Dr. Levitino. Why did you end your practice of doing abortions? I did over 1,200 abortions over a four-year period in private practice, not counting the ones that I did during my training. Um, I met my wife at, um, during my first year of training at Albany Medical Center. We got married about a year later and found that we had an infertility problem. After years of failed infertility treatment and several years trying to adopt a child, we were blessed with a, adopting a, a little girl that we named Heather. And, August of 1978. Um, as sometimes happens in those situations, my wife got pregnant the very next month and we had two children ten months apart. Um, two months short of my daughter Heather's sixth birthday, she was killed in an auto accident and literally died in her arms in the back of an ambulance. Anyone who has children might think they have some idea of what that feels like, but unless you've been through it yourself, you have no idea whatsoever. Um, I know people find it hard to believe, but uh, what do you do after disaster? You bury your child and then you go back to your life. And I don't remember exactly how long it was after my daughter died that I showed up at Albany Medical Center OR number 9 to perform my first second trimester d &E abortion. I wasn't thinking of it as anything special. This was routine to me. Um, but I reached in, literally pulled out an arm or leg and got sick. You know, earlier on I described stacking up body parts on the side of the table. It's not to, you know, gross people out, to use a simple term. When you do an, an abortion, you need to keep inventory. You have to make sure you get two arms and two legs and all the pieces. If you don't, your patient's going to come back infected, bleeding, or dead. Um, so I soldiered on and finished that abortion. And I know it sounds, as I said, hard for people to believe, but I'm, I'm telling you straight up my experience. You know, after over 1,200 abortions, first and second trimester up to 24 weeks and all the rest of it, and being very dedicated to it, for the first time in my life, I really looked. 
I really looked at that pile of body parts on the side of the table. And I didn't see her wonderful right to choose, and I didn't see all the money I just made. All I could see was somebody's son or daughter. And I stopped doing late-term abortions after that, and several months later stopped doing all abortions. Thank God. Thank you. Wow. You want to talk about unexpected but extremely necessary? That right there is it. I just went through the entire roller coaster of emotions. I was angry. I was joyous. I was glad that he stopped doing it. But at the same time, when you refer to taking inventory of babies' parts, these are human beings we're discussing right here. And it, my goodness, y'all, if you can watch and listen to this and still be okay with abortion, something is seriously wrong with you. You need repentance. You need a lot of help because this is evil. This is disgusting. And God bless Dr. Anthony Levitino for sharing in his story because I just wonder how many expectant mothers will watch this video through the years and it be the reason that they change their minds. This could literally save countless lives, baby boys and girls in the future. And I pray that it does because this needs to be heard far and wide. And I think it should be a mandatory requirement for every middle and high school student across the entire world to watch this video. We need to let people know what's really going on and how Planned Parenthood, they don't give two licks about what's best for a woman. The lady that founded that company, Margaret Sanger, she was a disgusting racist that believed in eugenics and literally wanted to wipe out the entire existence of black folks. And so far, her wicked plan has been brought into fruition because the majority of the 60 plus million abortions since Roe v. Wade came onto the scene in the 70s, that has been from the black community, which is a huge reason why blacks only account for like 13.6, nearly 14% of the population in our country. Stop falling for the trap. Abortion isn't something some form of women's health care. It's a sin that takes the life of another innocent human being. It's murder that's being committed by the abortionist and the mother. So honestly, I believe both of them should be thrown in jail. And I know that sort of accountability may never happen during my lifetime, but I'm darn sure going to keep on fighting until abortion is illegal everywhere for every reason. That's the hill worth dying on for me. I'm sick and tired of folks acting like women are the victims and getting picked on like that mostly bald dude in the beginning alluded to. Bull crap. No, they aren't. They know exactly what they're doing is wrong because the law was written on their conscience by God Almighty, whether they acknowledge him or not. We all know what's right or wrong. We get that, that feeling inside of our gut where we're like, well, man, this might not be right. This might not be okay. And the real victim here is the helpless baby in the womb that's getting attacked because those little boys and girls, they don't get a say so or not whether they get to live and grow or, or not. Like women keep making these false claims about their body, their choice. But in reality, it's not just your body. So it's it's not your choice. The baby is a human being with its own unique, one-of-a-kind DNA, a blessing that was created by God, just like you and I. And if you really want to talk about choices, ladies, you've already had multiple choices leading up to getting pregnant. You chose to have unprotected sex. You chose not to be patient and save yourself for marriage. So it's not anyone's fault but your own for the poor decisions that you made. But Devin, what about in the cases of rape? absolutely horrible and disgusting when it happens. But we're talking about extremely rare, less than 1% of all abortions were the result of rape or incest. Even so, that child shouldn't be punished for the sins of the father. That baby is the light and the silver lining in that situation. And the man will face judgment for his actions someday. But two wrongs don't make a right. And if you go and abort that child, I'd make the argument that you're even worse than the man because at least you're still alive. And if the child wasn't a result of rape, then the father has rights as well because because you didn't produce that baby on your own. A man put it there. You're not Mother Mary. The Holy Spirit didn't just come upon you and give us Jesus Christ. That's not you, and that's not your baby. So maybe you don't want to raise the baby. At least give the father a chance to or allow some loving family out there the opportunity through adoption. That sounds like a whole lot of choices to me that I'd be in favor of, but none of which are murder. Under no circumstances should that ever be allowed. And finally, because I know it always gets brought up, what about high-risk pregnancies? I'm not talking about 
about a baby with a defect. I'm talking about if a mother's life is really in danger, you make sure the doctors do whatever it takes and exhaust whatever resources that they have and try to save mama and the baby. But if it comes down to it, as a Christian, you at least save the mother and don't allow two lives to be lost. And as sad as it would be to lose that baby blessing, at that moment in time, that's God's will for that baby and that mama and, and that family as a whole. And hopefully she's able to get pregnant again someday. But in that situation, you do whatever it takes and leave the rest to God. But really what it comes down to, and most of y'all know this, is that when people bring up these extremely rare cases like rape and incest or high risk pregnancies, they're, they're real. They, they happen occasionally. But when people bring those up, it's usually an excuse to try and justify the evil that they're committing, to not have to pay accountability and, and face the, the decisions that they're making. That's what sin does. It comes down to a heart problem, a soul and spiritual problem, and people need to get right with the Lord and make that right. But I'll wrap this up because I could easily keep on ranting and stay fired up for days. I've talked about this time and time again. You, there's tons of videos on my channel that you could go watch of me breaking down how wrong abortion is from every single angle. But what I am going to do is I'm going to leave you with two quotes that I want you to think about. And the first one is from my man, Tom McDonald. He nailed it in his song, People So Stupid, when he said, bacteria is life on Mars, but a heartbeat isn't life on Earth. Weird. And then Ronald Reagan once said, I've noticed that everyone who is for abortion has already been born. Ain't that something? Seems like common sense, great points to me. But if you disagree, let me know why. I would love to hear your thoughts on all of this. I know it was a deep one, but if you agree with me, drop a comment below saying choose life and let's keep the conversation rolling. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring that notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a new video. If you like what I'm doing over here and you want to show a little extra love and support, make sure you go check out our website down below in the description section. That way you can get all the awesome shirts you see me wearing in every single video. They're all made by my my beautiful wife. This one says created with a purpose. It has it on the chest and on the sleeve. It's based on Ephesians 2 verse 10. I like mine a little baggy, so it seems a little extra room to move and groove, but we got all different sizes ranging from itty bitty extra small to big, big and hefty 5X, a bunch of colors, different designs, all of that. I'm sure you could find something that you like or a great gift for someone that you love. Outside of that, you can always join the Gibson family here on YouTube and become a member. You can buy me a coffee. You can join the Patreon family. All those links are down below as well. By no means do you have to do any of that. Just showing up and allowing my freckle face to rant at you for a few minutes. I am greatly appreciative. I love y'all. I cannot thank you enough. Until next time, I'll be praying for you. Godspeed. I'm gone.